Hi there, I'm Klaus, e-commerce business coach and growth advisor. I have put together a quick crash course for you on how to optimize your e-commerce store's product page. Um, reason for that is you want to obviously lower your bounce rate, increase your Google rankings and get more conversions on your store. All of that will help with that. Um, I will focus solely on Shopify stores today. If you want to learn more on how to optimize um, self-hosted stores, um, for instance, WooCommerce, then just simply contact me. So the two topics that we are today talking about today or we're working on today will be site speed optimization and search engine optimization. Um, let's start with the low hanging fruit and let's optimize your store and product page for a faster loading time. So we go into site speed optimization. You probably have heard that Walmart found out that for every second they improve their load speed, they experienced a 2% increase in conversions. Also to a, a study according to Akamai, 40% of visitors would leave a website if they have wait to wait for more than three seconds. So that's more important part is that everything that is slower than three seconds, you're losing the majority of your traffic. So I have picked a random dropshipping site here and um, I just um, loaded also a random product page and we will go through that and see what can be optimized here. So what I normally do is um, I sort of use a couple of tools to find out how fast this page loads or the product page. One of the best tools, and there's a free tool out there, is GT Metrics. So what you basically do is you just um, put in the URL of the product page or any page that you have into GT Metrics, and then it will create a report here. Now, if we go down here, the most important at this point for us is the load time. I've done this a few times with the page and unfortunately load time is very bad. So we are seeing 16.6 seconds here for the page to load. So that's obviously very, very slow. So there's a couple of things that obviously need to be addressed there. And it's a Shopify store, which should load faster because it's on a, a content distribution network on a CDN by Shopify. So that's already one thing that um, is optimized. Um, if you're hosting WooCommerce sites, for instance, that's something that you need to address separately. So what you can see here, the page size is a three and a half megabyte, which is not too much. Um, and the requests are 201, which is fairly high. So to find out where your problems are, you can go in here and then either tick these boxes, which will give you some ideas, or even better, you go in this kind of waterfall overview, and then you can address separate parts of your code separately. So if you wanna just look at the image size, for instance, here, um, it will show you all the images on the page and the specific load time um, on this side and the size of the image here. So you see this product page has a lot of images. So that's probably the main reason why it is loading so slow. Um, if you see bigger ones like this one here, for instance, um, you can definitely go and try to optimize that. I will show you how to, to do that. Now, the next thing is you can see if there's any fonts that are loaded. So there's a couple of fonts that are loading here. And um, the interesting fact that you always should look at is JavaScript, which mainly comes through Shopify plugins. Um, so there might be just some plugins, um, additional features in Shopify that you have added to your store that might slow down your store massively. So if you click all of this off and just go for the JavaScript and go through this here. So there is lazy size images, which is a good thing. And you see they have a couple of different plugins in there. And to find out which plugins somebody's using or your store is using, um, obviously you know, but there's ways to find out on how to do that. So um, there's a website which shopifyapps.com, which basically tells me this this store that we're looking at, this one here, has these apps installed right now. So they have MailChimp, so they're doing mail marketing, which is a good thing. And they have the standard product reviews and they have looks reviews. So there's also already something that I've found that can be optimized. Um, you don't need two product reviews um, apps in there. So you can get either for the free product reviews, which is by Shopify, or you take the look one. So you can get rid of one of the two. <clears throat> they have Recount, which is good. Trust Hero, which is fine. Smart Search is a very, very good app there. And then they are using a email pop-up, which probably integrates with MailChimp and a recovery in the in-card upsell. So the best way to find out which one slows down your site is obviously switching them off step by step. 
and then redoing your GT metrics and see if that gives you a boost in loading speed. Now, another tool that you should use to find out how fast your site is, is coming from Google itself, is the PageSpeeds Insights. It has some different metrics that it is using, and uh, as it is coming from Google and you want to rank well in Google, obviously you should follow um, or reach a good point uh, ranking there. So for mobile, you see here, these product page gets only 23 out of 100. So that's definitely not making Google happy. If you click here, you can see the result for desktop is slightly better. So you're somewhere in the medium range. Um, but again, there might be some things that might be addressed. So for mobile, and most of the traffic nowadays is coming from mobile. So your store should be mainly focused on a good uh, mobile usability. And for mobile, people even will wait less to, for your site to load. So if you go here, um, you see, the first meaningful point um, basically is when your site is almost loaded, it's four and a half seconds on this one, um, but overall it says 27 seconds. So that's that's a lot. Same with like the waterfall on GT metrics, you can go in here and then basically go through these different things to see where your site is not loading fast enough. So there might be just problems there. So again, it brings us back to script evaluation there is definitely some JavaScript in that site um, that are slowing the site down. Now, the next thing we want to look at is the image size. Um, this one has not that many images for the product itself, but if you scroll down, they have added a lot of reviews with images, which is not a bad thing, to be honest, um, but one needs to look on how big these images are. And then if you scroll down here, um, there's a typo in there, um, then you see also that there is more and more products, images coming. So loading a lot of images there, um, which is for the one point confusing, all of these things here, you should focus only on one product. And um, on the other hand, you probably can do with less than, than this huge range of them. Um, by the way, these are imported from AliExpress, so which is also not good because you imported everything that has one star, um, which <clears throat> does not really help you in increasing um, your conversions. Now, as for this product, um, one tool I use is called Tiny PNG. I've downloaded this image already, and just see where it is. There it is. So right now it has 73 kilobyte. If I put it in here, I can save 18%, brings me to 60 kilobyte over there. And um, the image has the same quality, the same size. And I just download this and upload it again. And with that, I already have saved 10 kilobytes. If I do this for all images that are on the page here, that will definitely help you. Then the other thing with images, um, you'll see it here, it has a very weird size, 984 by 984. It's a squared image, um, usually 800 by 800 or 640 by 640 or 600 by 600 is more than sufficient um, for a Shopify site. So you will have this smaller there as well. Now, going forward also for images, there is a called WebSpeed at cloudinary.com um, where basically you load the site as a whole, the page as a whole, and then it gives you also a overview of how much you can save per image. Um, so they have different variants. You can go for the um, WebP, which is the highest compression, the, the newest format, or you can go for um, standard JPEG or PNG files. And there you see, again, it shows you that from the original size, um, you can scale down to 63 kilobytes. Um, also, you should re-change the size and that should be consistent on all images to 800 by 800 or 640 or 600 by mm -hmm. 600, depending on how you want to have this. These all have different sizes, which is not best practice, to be honest. You see, there's a lot of savings there that it can be done only on the images. Now we addressed the JavaScript and we addressed the images. Um, JavaScript, obviously the apps. This is pretty much things you can do in um, in Shopify. The one thing with JavaScript is you can rearrange and for that you probably need a programmer which um, goes into your um, product source code um, page and in, um, in your theme and rearrange the order in which the JavaScripts are loaded. Um, there are some JavaScripts that are necessary, but they don't need to be loaded first and they might be just slow. Um, so you want to put them at the end of the source code. 
Um, same CSS files can be compressed, for instance, and um, very important if you install plugins and you don't use them, um, do not just deactivate them because they will just uh, they will still um, have load time in the background even if they are deactivated and slow down your site. And if you deinstall app, apps, Shopify apps, um, then you also might have source code leftovers in your theme, um, which will slow down your um, your site. So that's sort of garbage um, script code that's a leftover. So best case there is do a backup of your theme, then upload and test plugins as you like. And um, if you don't like them and you throw them out, um, then you just go and upload the backup of your theme, which has a, a clean code and will be fast as it was in the beginning. Otherwise, you're just adding adding more code to your theme and your site will be getting lower, uh, slower and slower over time. So this is um, a, a quick rundown, not an in-depth run, rundown on um, optimizing for speed. Um, as I said, if you're running WooCommerce, it's a different game. Um, then we're looking into a much more broader spectrum of optimization techniques um, that start from your hosting, go over WordPress into WooCommerce. So that's much more complicated, um, but for Shopify, you're on a good side. Now, going into the second topic for today, and it's search engine optimization. And I will address this quickly. Um, it is a huge topic, obviously, but there's a few things you can do to make it better. So starting from the domain, that's a good thing, actually, what I see here. Um, he kept it very short and to the point, telling what the product is about. Um, sometimes our people are just um, importing stuff from AliExpress, for instance, and then they have this very, very long keyword stuffed URLs um, up there, which are not in, in favor for Google. Google um, will not like them. The shorter your URL is, the more to the point, the better it is. So you want to keep this very short. Then the next thing on optimization, obviously, you want to have a proper um, title. Same here, a lot of people using um, dropshipping are just importing the whole description on, from AliExpress and end up with a very, very long, unreadable text here. So you need to put some work in here and um, make it clear and readable for the user and still make it sufficient for search engine optimization so that people um, will find it in the search engines. So the next point I want to go into on this page is the description. Um, obviously, description very important in regards of optimizing for search engine optimization. Now, if you go and scroll down on this page, one thing you will see that there is no description on the page. So you have basically product images there. Do you have reviews? And if you scroll lower, you see other products here. So you completely missed out on a description text on this page which obviously is very bad. So you need to have some text that explains uh, the benefits of the products, or features of the products, um, your shipping times possibly, or return policies, everything that builds trust. And there's nothing of that here. Um, obviously, that needs to be added. If you have a description text, you might want to work with H1, H2, H3 text to highlight certain headlines um, that contain your keyword or variations of the keyword. That will definitely help with the rankings and uh, makes it easier for Google to understand what that page is about. Next thing is images. So this images, and I downloaded this earlier, has a product name, image three or one, three, six, five, blah, blah, blah. Obviously you would rename all of your images like avocado slicer, peeler, whatsoever. So you need to rename your images properly that Google will understand what that image is about. Also add a alt text, a, an alternative text um, to when you upload the image so that um, again, Google understands what that image is about. There are some advanced techniques um, to optimize the images even further, but I won't go into that because um, it's quite technical. Um, but if you rename the image and if you add a alt text there, then um, you're a good step ahead. Um, so another point that helps you a lot in um, optimizing your Shopify store is a Shopify plugin or app called SEO Manager. Um, it's relatively cheap and it helps you in finding all the bits and pieces that you need to optimize. And um, I use it a lot and it definitely helps with ranking. 
One more thing that I want to look into here is um, structured code. Uh, let me open quickly my um, structured data testing tool. This is coming from Google. And with that, you basically just load it. You enter um, the page that you want to test. And then it does a test for structured tool. Structured data is sort of hidden in your source code and will give Google an indication what your page is about. Now, if you have this page loaded, you see there's 19 warnings there. Not really errors, but warnings. So that these are things that can be optimized. Um, so if we go into the details and go in here and just scroll down, you see that there is a couple of things like here, the description, for instance, or the review that needs to be addressed. So if I go and see that there's a problem with the description, um, I can also go in here into the source code and search for the description. And there we go. So for the description here, um, the description that I find for this page is not really product related. It says free shipping worldwide. Your satisfaction is our aim. Cheers, whatever that means. So that's something obviously you want to have a description that is SEO friendly, that explains what your product is and contains the keyword that you're going for. Also, they have a um, description or a title tag up here. The title is not too bad. Basically, it says what it is and what the company name is. But if you want to get into Google Shopping or an Amazon or any other kind um, of platform that needs data feeds, um, then you would need to optimize that. For data feeds, there is a certain structure that you need to follow. And then it will be easier um, to get integrated in these um, Google Shopping feed, for instance, for Google Shopping ads. If you don't follow that, they either will not let you get into this um, kind of platform or your rankings will be very low. So go to structured data and run your site through and see what the problems are. Um, sometimes you can solve things on your theme level. Um, most of the times um, you would need some kind of developer that helps you with optimizing that. So with these simple, simple changes, you should be able to increase your conversion and your revenue. Um, obviously, these are only two core strategies on how to optimize your e-commerce store for more sales. There are many other core strategies that I use to help my customers um, in optimizing for conversion rate optimization, email marketing automation, paid advertising, and so on. So you need to have all these puzzle pieces um, to get a full running and fully optimized um, e-commerce store uh, that will make you money. So just as a background, I have been where you have been. I have been in the trenches um, of my own seven-figure store every day. And I'm an online business for a long time, for about 20 years. I have a lot of experience in digital marketing and e-commerce. And if it happens online, then there's a fair chance that I have either done it, trained people on it, um, or managed it. So this obviously is a lot of experience, and it um, has turned in my greatest asset. Now, my question to you is, would you like to help with that stuff? Because if it would be, if, if you would say yes, um, this would be the perfect time for you. Um, I'm looking for five business owners this month who want to scale and grow their business. How we do this, um, three steps to it. Number one, uh, we build a growth strategy for your business that's number one then we implement systems and tools to optimize it and last step third step we convert traffic into sales and scale and grow your business overall so if you want to learn more about this just click the button below and i will be happy to send you more information and then you can decide if you want to go for it that's it for now thanks so much and have a great day